DaVinci Surgical System is the most advanced streamlined surgical experience for minimally invasive surgery available in the world today. I can build that. Hey, how's everyone's global health crisis going? My house is on full goddamn quarantine and I'll probably be dead in a week anyway. Not from the virus, like, like a electrocution accident or something. It's actually giving me a lot of free time and what better way to spend free time right now than to help the medical industry. Now I can't do any chemistry or biology or like body stuff, yuck, but I can do robotics. And let me tell you, those Da Vinci surgery robotics rat bastards are ripping hospitals off. Look at this, $2 million for one shitty robot. They can spend that on a couple hundred bandages or like one ambulance ride in the US. We can build a better surgery robot for a lot less. Come on. The biggest flaw in Da Vinci's design is that it relies on these clunky, slow robotic arms for movement. Say you're operating on a patient's foot. He starts screaming out in pain. You gotta get up to his face, smack him around a little bit, make him shut up. Good fucking luck with these robotic arms. They're slow as shit and they don't have any travel distance. Instead, we're gonna mount the surgical tools to a rail system that can move anywhere on the operating table. Hey, look, it's past Michael. You know it took him five whole days to 3D model and build one rail carriage? What a dipshit. Hey man, shut the fuck up. This shit's hard. Make me a little bitch. I'm the narrator. I'm like, God, you can't kill me. I'm Here's what the final carriage looks like. You see, it uses wheel bearings to travel up and down the slots in this aluminum rod. But Michael, you're just gonna use your hand to make it move? No, you're stupid, and I hate you. For power, we're using a brushless DC motor and an O-drive to turn this into kind of like a brushless servo motor. Do I know what that means? Absolutely fucking not. I've never done this before. What I do know is someone told my voice crack. <laughs> what I do know is someone told me this would be fast and very accurate. And all you have to do to put it in is Whoosh. I forgot to record all the sound effects, okay? Give me a fucking break. Lit. I got the motor very professionally hooked up to the driver board, which is hooked up to my computer, so we can see what this thing can do. Okay, so this is the like calibration sequence. It needs to do this before it actually runs. Oh, that's so fucking sick. Uh, I think it, it should be a little faster though. Uh, oh, okay, the motor has default parameters, so you can just turn those up. Okay, let's try it out now. Oh, bad, 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 bad. <laughs> that's good, that's, that's fast. Give me one second. Okay, you just stand, stand right there. Whoa, it's pretty cool. We just gotta put a few of these together and it looks like this. I did the quirky little snap teleportation thing, right? That was three weeks ago, I'm fucking tired. But I built this test platform out of aluminum and wood that I stole from my girlfriend's bed frame. It's not like I can go to Home Depot on quarantine. It's just a prototype so I can write and test the software before I build the actual thing, but even the prototype is pretty cool. It's the same idea with the motor carriage on the X axis, but now I have two additional motors on the Y axis. And on their own, they're just motors. They don't know how to talk to each other. They don't know how to cooperate. But if you write some software that can talk to all the motors, you can make it do pretty much anything you want. This is the homing sequence. It figure outs the bounds of the machine by measuring the amperage of the, of the motor on the motors when they stop. <laughs> Yeah, you can make it. You can make it do this shit. It's maybe not as stable as you'd want it to be, but yeah, it's just a prototype. <laughs> so stupid. So I'm controlling it with my mouse right now. It looks jerky and awful, but it's actually got a really good amount of precision to it. It's kind of going in a circle from the top-down view. Like I said, this is not the final surgery robot. It's going to be much more refined, much more medical looking. You know, much more safe for the user. And all that movement was controlled by the code I wrote. Don't worry, I'm not going to show it. I know everyone thinks it's boring, so we. Psych! I don't give a shit what you think. Look at this dynamic uh, bounds detection routine. That's fucking sick. Here's a limit switch. You can put it here to detect the bounds of your machine. Yeah, fuck that limit switch. It's cringe. Instead write some code that steps the motor forward until it starts using a lot of power, then you know you hit the edge of the rail, and then you know exactly where you are in relation to the bounds of the machine. It's fucking sick. Look how cool the code part is, guys. I'm gonna keep going. This part applies the scaling factors that are calculated as a function of the input but Michael, I hear you ask. So you can move the carriage over any part of the operating table you want. Great, but how are you gonna move the medical tools up and down to engage with the patient? Well, that's where the carriage utility mechanism comes into play. That's the thing that's gonna move the scalpel or the clamp or whatever up and down, which is great. There's just a small problem, slight problem. Well, I built it, I built it, which is a good thing. My original plan was, you know, just to have a thin piece of plastic with a motor attached to it that moves a plate, easy. But then I fucking, I saw that thing. <laughs> 
okay, there's no way that's gonna survive, so I gotta make it a little strong. You know, I may as well make a goal a little faster. I got a little carried away, and now it looks like a time bomb, and it weighs 10 fucking pounds. It works great. The motor precisely moves the mounting plate up and down wherever you want it to go. The thing is, I just don't know if those motors can handle 10 pounds, so we're gonna have to do a little test. Michael, why don't you just use the carriage utility mechanism to test it out? Well, it took me a long time to build, and it's fucking beautiful, so cry more. It looks like it's handling small movements pretty well. Why? Access action. Okay, that's not that bad. Okay. Oh, it's fine. It'll be fine. We can probably just go ahead and make the final version. And it looks like this. I did the stupid hand thing again. It's been three more weeks. I have severe depression. But Michael, where's the surgery robot? Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, big reveal. This is the surgery robot. Massive payoff. Huge. I have brain damage. Behold the superior surgery robot, you Da Vinci shitter tins. It's got the cum. It's got the cable management. It's got the super fucking hard to reach driver boards. I don't know why I put them under here. I thought it would look cool. But Michael, does it even work? Does it work? <laughs> Does it work? I don't know if it works. I haven't turned it on yet. I've been too afraid since it took me so long to build, so I turned the camera on so you can at least see my tears when it tears itself apart. I'm worried about this shit because when I built it, I went ooga booga caveman brain, metal strong. Metal not strong. Metal more like McDonald's play place trampoline. But you gotta take chances when you're innovating on the next great thing. So I'm gonna turn it on. Oh God, oh please. Yeah, okay. Please don't break it. Yeah! All right, the machine's working. Now we can start to control it. But Michael, where's the controller? Fuck you, you are the controller. I got this VR hand tracking camera off of Amazon that works super goddamn well. So you just take the hand coordinates from this, pipe them in the surgery robot, and bing, bang, boom. <laughs> oh, boom! Fuck you, DaVinci Robotics! You can move my thing with just floating your hand around! Robot, go here. Oh, robot, do surgery here. Oh, no, patient bleeding there. Oh, do surgery there on that part. How about you do surgery over here? Now do surgery over there, and now do surgery- Fuck you, DaVinci! You shitty robot can't do that. You need to squeeze those little metal robot teeth to do yours. Oh shit, before I sell my design to surgeons across the nation, we have to attach some surgical tools to the cum, because otherwise it's just a big ass robot. So let's buy a scalpel on Amazon. Wow, that is just unacceptable. Scalpels are gonna take a whole three days. Wow, that's pretty reasonable. Fuck no, that's messed up. Dang global health crisis. That's far too long. If only I had an alternative. When you really think about it, scalpels are just shitty, smaller knives. So why don't we just use bigger, better knives? Like, uh, hello, we already have those. Wake up, sheeple! Are you tired of outdated surgical technology? Are you looking for the cutting edge in power, precision, and usability? Look no further. The future of surgical robotics is here. <laughs> Look at the fucking knife! <laughs> Unlike some other surgical systems, we've run a gamut of tests to ensure our machine has power. I'm gonna stab a pineapple with oh, fuck. Commencing the operation. <laughs> Operate on it. Surgery over here now. Um, patient, small incision. Uh, small incision, we'll move the patient. Commence surgery on the patient. But power isn't the only thing we strive for. Precision is an essential tenet of surgery and we make no exceptions when testing for accuracy. What the fuck is that? Hey, you're ready to do some painting? No, Lily, come on, please. Ah! Oh shit, oh fuck, oh. Draw the Mona Lisa. Draw the <laughs> Mona Lisa. Ah! Oh, I got the paint, I got the paint. Eyes. That's a little racist looking, Lily. I'm not gonna. Oh, shit. Yeah. You... yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna pressure you, but this is supposed to show how accurate my machine is. <laughs> It'll reach the water. <laughs> Let's see a Da Vinci try to do that. You might be wondering is the system FDA approved? But don't just take our word for it. Here's what a real medical professional has to say about this innovative new technology. We're gonna go for like a laparoscopic appendectomy. So if we just make a small incision above the chest here, uh, we can, okay. Uh, a little bit more difficult for some procedures, but not, you can see you still have a lot more accurate control than a lot of surgical systems. Fuck, ah. Like I was saying, moving the patient is a lot easier with the system. Like normally you'd have to manually move them. Would, be, uh, would you add this to your hospital? Do you think hospitals could adopt? Uh, seems a little dangerous. Okay, I appreciate the feedback. You're wrong. Last but not least, we've made our machines so intuitive that anyone can do surgery with no prior training. So you've never seen this machine before in your life? No. 
this perfect because this study is to see if we can bring someone from zero skill level all the way up to the ability of a surgeon. Boot up right in front of, not too close because it's kind of dangerous. So just put your hand out. <laughs> Could you just put your hand out above the thing? <laughs> Higher up controls the knife position. You can move it further closer and it'll get further away from you. We're gonna make a small incision right above the ear. <laughs> so there's some of six, there's some of six. Okay, so you're doing it wrong. Oh, shit. Okay, so clearly, well fuck. Oh, cut, you're clearly making another incision to stop, plug the hole with the knife. Yeah, yeah, perfect, nice. Yeah, you're perfect. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, this, what's, it's okay, no, it's fine. It's, it's learning. It's a learning experience. Try and retract the knife from the head. Just, let's just try and get it out of the... Oh, I did Yeah. It's, yeah. Okay, good incision. Ah! If your patient's over here and you don't want them to be over there, move them over here. Do some surgery over here. Move them back. I don't even know what surgery this was supposed to be. Thank you for watching. That concludes research and development for my surgical system. If you're a hospital looking to try it out, follow me on Twitter, subscribe to me on YouTube, and maybe, just maybe, I'll let you borrow it for a bit. Remember, stay in school, smoke crack, fuck you Da Vinci robots, bye. This YouTube video is sponsored by Raycon. I have to send them this ad early and they're gonna have no fucking idea what's going on. Raycons are super convenient wireless earbuds that come in at about half the price of any other premium option. But it's not a sacrifice for quality. They sound just as good as any other top audio brand. I've said it before, but I've been using Raycons since before they even sponsored me. I just needed something wireless and affordable and they ended up being really good quality too. I wore them the entire time I was assembling parts for the surgery robot, which is no problem for their new everyday E25s because they got six hours of battery life, seamless Bluetooth pairing, they fit really well. At the end of the day, I just fucking care that they're good earbuds and I don't have to worry about them. They just fucking work. So if you're interested, click the link in the description to go to buyraycon.com slash reads for 15% off your order. I want to thank Raycon again because the parts for this video really started to add up after a while and I don't think I would have been able to do it without their support. So thank you. I appreciate it. And again, if you're interested, go to buyraycon.com slash reads for 15% off. That's the end of the video. That's the end. Thank you. Bye.